We are coming to you from the Coliseum in Oakland where this afternoon Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Jose Abreu, Alexi Ramirez in the Sox. As they get set to butt heads with Josh Donaldson and the Oakland Athletics. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you the finale of this three-game set, as you know, they've taken the first two. They won the opener 5-4. We tried to come back. We scored three in the top of the ninth, just couldn't quite get there. Then yesterday was just a butt-kicking. They beat us 11 to nothing. So the Sox now have lost four in a row. But on the other side of that field, the A's have won six in a row. Oakland's doing just about everything right during this winning streak, and you'll see when we look at the numbers just exactly how you put together a six-game streak. You hit over 300. You score 39 runs. You only give up eight in the six games. You hit the ball out of the ballpark. You get extra base hits. The ERA is immaculate, 131. And this Oakland team right now is clicking on all cylinders. And it's always said it's not who you play, but when you play them. And this is not a good time to play the Oakland team. Well, that's team. the way it's always been. That's why you got to play them. Yeah. But on the other side of the page, too, for us, Andre Rienzo. Rienzo's been red hot. He's 3-0 and in four starts, and he's starting to get the curveball over the plate. But even more important for Rienzo, he's got a cutter. And when the curveball isn't there, that cutter has been, and he's thrown the ball very well. Now, the way you look at it, when Chris Sale comes back, there's three pitchers for two spots. Andre wants to make sure he gets one of those, and with that in mind, he's going to give you a pretty good effort today, especially if he gets a curveball over early. We got Donaldson back in the lineup. This is a lineup that has hit the ball out of the ballpark. Hopefully the Sox can produce some offense. Well, we're just looking for our first win on this nine-game road trip, so sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. AT&T U-verse. AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. And by Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. 
Welcome back to the O.Co. Coliseum here in Oakland. And the Oakland Athletics take the field. And let's take a look side by side comparisons between the two teams. The record's vastly different. The batting average almost identical. The runs per game, Oakland has the lead. Home runs, the Sox with a short lead, but the biggest difference is the earned run average. 286 as a team at this time of year in the American League is spectacular for Oakland. 481, not quite as good as the Sox would like. So hoping to salvage one game of the series, and let's take a look at how Robin's going to line up our Sox for this afternoon's affair. Gordon Beckham to lead it off with Connor Gillespie in the two spot. He's been red hot. Then it's Jose Abreu, Dan Vicieto, Alexi Ramirez, Paul Canerco, Tyler Flowers behind the plate, Moises Sierra and Alejandro Diaz in center field and hitting ninth. The Kia defensive setup and how they're going to line up behind Tommy Malone. It's Cespedes, Gentry, and Reddick in the infield. Donaldson back in the lineup with Lowry, Sogard, and Moss. Derek Norris once again behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is... Tommy Malone, who's got a very good straight change. He's one and three this year. The ERA a little above four and a half. And he's allowed four home runs. The umpires for the game this afternoon. Manny Gonzalez behind the plate. Seth Buckminster out at first. Brian Knight is at second. And Field and Culbreth is at third. It's on a beautiful day for baseball with some extreme heat warnings in the outlying areas. The Sox trying to get on the board on this road trip, and Robin would like to see a resurgent offense. So they throw the ball around the infield, which means we're ready to go, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Stevie. Thank you. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as Gordon Beckham. We'll start things off. Gordon comes in hitting at 240, a couple of homers. He's driven in six, had an eight game hitting streak snapped last evening. And the 27 year old Southpaw's first pitch of the game hit hard, high, and deep. He goes back, he looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes! One pitch, one hit, one run. First. That's number five given up by Malone. Gordon hits his third. He's driven in seven. And for a team that had managed just one run in two games, this is a very promising way to start. Our Ford home run replay. Gordon just goes down and gets it. And takes it out of the yard. Cespedes can only look up. It's very lively here during the daytime. At night, that might not have made it. But it'll be jumping here today. And here's Gillespie. Takes first pitch strike. Connor hitting at 313. No homers, he's driven in 13. And there's the ball. One and one to count. Breaking pitch, couldn't get it. For Gordon, that's the second leadoff home run of his career. First was August 2nd of 2012. Now the breaking ball. Malone, six feet tall, 205 pounds out of Santa Clarita, California. Five games over in his career, 27 and 22. Ball hit sharply. So guard is there. And it's out number one. And here at the Coliseum, 330 down the lines, 362 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Batting in the third position, designated hitter, number 79, Jose Cabrera. So here's a Brayu, two for eight in the series with a homer. Takes first pitch strike. Out 
field for the most part straight up. And the count nothing in two. Two down. So with two out, let's check out our picks to click. Jim Angio, our director and the crew, well, he went with Vicieto. Steve's going with Tyler Flowers. And Laney Dempster, Joe Rohde, Ron Vesely, David Ratchke, Carmen Vitale, Julie Bartos, and myself. We're going to go with Gillespie. Tank with a solid hit into left center field. He's going to make the turn. Here he goes. And he's safe. So he picks up his 13th two bagger. That's the only guy in this outfield that you want to test as far as throwing. Gentry has a good but not great arm. He's pretty accurate with this, but he can't get it there in time. So a hustle double for Viciato. And pick him up, Alexi. Alexei comes in at 327, five homers and 27 driven in. That's a curveball that he's tightened up somewhat. Even though he went 12 and 9 last year, his ERA was a bit higher than he would want. So he's tightened up the curveball, and now it breaks much more sharply. That was a pretty good one. Now coming into this ball game, our starting lineup was four for 36 against this guy. And the four hits, all of them were singles. Gordon put an end to that in a heartbeat. One pitch, put it on the board. Now feel straight up, spread out about equal distance. Two and one to count. And now it make it three and one. Well, Malone figured in a pretty Big deal for the Washington Nationals. They got Gio Gonzalez from these athletics. And along with Brad Peacock, Tommy Malone came over, and Derek Norris, one of the big additions to this team, came from the Nationals in that same trade. There was a soft hit line drive. Meanwhile, the home run by Beckham after half inning of play. So our guys won, and their guys coming to back.
Oakland Athletics today. It's Jason at the top, then Lowry Donaldson. Moss, Cespedes, and Reddick in the middle. Norris, Sogard, and Gentry rounding it out. The key of defense. And how they're going to set up behind Rienzo. Vicieto, Diaz, and Sierra in the outfield. Gillespie, Ramirez, Beckham, and Canerco in the infield. Tyler Flowers with the nod behind the plate. And our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher is Andre Rienzo. This is fifth start, his sixth game. And 3 0 is pretty good. And here's Jaso. Okay, so the DH hitting at 306, three homers. He's driven an eight, but he's been swinging a hot bat. In fact, last night he was three for five. Two and oh the count. He's come in hitting at 259 and is a club with a terrific 2.86 team ERA. And as a team, this lineup will make you work. They're a patient bunch. Deep in the right center field. So both men, the leadoff hitters, go deep, and this game is tied in one. Fourth home run for Jaso. He's now driven in nine. We told you it'd be very lively today. It's hot, and the daytime gives you about another 10 feet as we look at our forward home run replay. Andre fell behind 2 and 0, oh, and Jaso jumps on a fastball right in the middle of the zone. So here's Lowry. Takes first pitch strike. That's the fifth home run that Rienzo has thrown. Third career leadoff home for Jay. So that ball wrapped hard right at Sierra. So one out. Well, you know, it's it's a game. As we've said many, many times, it's not who you play, it's when you play them. So it, it doesn't make any difference. If you play a, a great team at the right time, you beat them. If you play a bad team at the wrong time, they beat you. And when you're playing a team that's playing as good as open right now, they have 25 wins. They're 10 over. They're on a six game winning streak. And you know, being a pitcher, the first thing you say to yourself, I can't be falling behind these guys, walking anybody. You better get ahead of them because they've been swinging the bats very well. They've been swinging it well, and their pitchers have been unbelievable, not only in the rotation, but out of the bullpen. Well, they, when you come in with a bunch of, when you come in with a team ERA. 2.86. I don't care what league it's in, but especially in the American, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. One and one to count. A little clear pine tar on the bat, and getting a better grip for Donaldson, who had a scheduled day off yesterday, left his own devices. Bob Melvin said he would want to play each and every day, but he figures. You got to rest him occasionally, and yesterday was a day, and it certainly didn't hurt their offense. And now that two-run homer that he hit in the first game was the difference. Put him on top, freedom one, and we almost came back. Eight homers, 27 knocked in. Last year, Donaldson hit 301, 24 homers, and drove in 93. And played pretty much most of the year a gold glove caliber third base. For a guy who was signed as a catcher originally by the Cubs and was an afterthought about moving to third. They tried two guys ahead of him. Finally, they just moved him over there and said, see what you can do. Nobody else has worked out. Well, Donaldson has more than worked out. He's been terrific for them. Down. 
two out, and that'll bring up Brandon Moss, who's four for nine with a couple of homers and five knocked in. And all that damage coming last night. I'm going to put this severe shift on him and hope that he hits a ground ball. Because all three of the hitters so far has hit the ball in the air. Not a recommended thing today. When the count. And the count one and two. Well, since August 19th of last year, Moss has more home runs than anybody in the American League. 20. And two of his teammates. We're tied for second. Coco Crisp and Josh Donaldson with 15. And the other two are Brian Dozier and David Ortiz. Full count. Cespedes in the on deck circle. Is a rare combination of power and pretty good speed. That's three two pitch yanked foul. So after the game, we will board our charter, head on down to Houston where we'll spend an off day tomorrow. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, take on the Astros. Then after that, go into Kansas City, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Before returning home with the Yankees, so make your plans to be with us when we get back. Any good seats available for that series? The Yankees these days are a struggling bunch. They're just 19 and 19. They've got Sabathia hurt with a a knee problem. A well, walk, and that'll bring up Cespedes, hitting at 265, seven homers, 22 knocked in. You know, we'll have four with the Yankees, three with Cleveland, and three with San Diego on that 10 game homestand. But we got to get Adam Eaton back. It's a different lineup when that young man is in there. He's not too far away. Checks it up, fouls it back. I feel very deep all the way around, as you would expect. For Cespedes, who's got some big power. Yeah, well, the outfield we got, they're better off playing a little deep for the man on first base. There's a breaking pitch, and the counter went too. Keep the ball in front of them so that guy can't score on the double. In fact, they're better off playing that way on almost every situation. <laughs> well, they're pretty pretty far back there. A couple of first basemen talking it over at first. Two strikes with two out, one in. Game tied at one here in the first inning if you're just joining us. And the Orioles hitting at the bottom of the night, fairly the Tigers seven to five. Here you go. 
Leadoff homer by Gordon Beckham. Leadoff homer by John Jason. One one. As usual, Dan Hayes from ZSNChicago.com and Dan Keppinger. Jeff Keppinger was uh, designated for assignment earlier today. The White Sox, they parted ways with him. Uh, obviously, there's 10 days for him to either be traded or, or released at that point. Uh, he's out of minor league options, so that's not an option at this point. But the emphasis is the kids. Rick Hahn said that's the, the main thing. They want to make sure that Connor Gillespie has playing time. They want to make sure that Marcus Semien has some chances. They want Gordon Beckham to keep playing and not have another infielder thrown into this mix. They want to keep Larry Garcia up in the, the majors as well. And and it was really about the kids. They, you know, Rick Hahn said at the time that they signed Jeff Keppinger last year, I think it was December 2012, they didn't have a lot of options. They were kind of shorthanded at third base. They didn't get Connor Gillespie till February. Remember that late spring training trade. And, Things have changed a lot in that last 18 months. He said it's on him that it didn't work out, but this is something they need to do. Well, it's not on him because of the fact that the time he made the deal, it looked like a good deal. It looked like it filled the need for this ball club. The guy just hit 325. Uh, and, and the thing is, is this is not absorbing a huge amount of money. I mean, obviously, eight and a half million dollars is, is a significant amount of money, but we've seen guys get monster contracts. I remember Russ Ortiz back in the early 2000s get about a 48 million dollar deal and get released in the second year of it and so it's it's an amount they can absorb and and he said he was very thankful that jerry reinstorf gave them the chance to do that because the future with, with the future in mind well you're talking about you know was a guy like that you're talking about four or five hundred at bats now you do you want him to get them because he doesn't fit in the the future of the ball club, but you want the two guys that you just mixed mentioned to get them, so that that solves itself right there. Now, how about Adam Eaton? Adam Eaton, it's uh, it's gonna be sort of like planes, trains, and automobiles here. He's uh, he's going on a direct flight today to meet the team in Durham. He'll play two days with Charlotte in Durham. Uh, Chris Sale will be there tomorrow too, and they'll uh, they'll play, and then they have a four or three hour bus ride to Norfolk on Saturday, where Eaton will play four innings. And then leave Norfolk to come back and join the White Sox. Hopefully, as long as all goes well by Sunday in Houston. We talked about Micah Johnson getting the promotion to AAA. Has there been any talk of perhaps trying a couple of different positions or another position? We uh, we actually when we talked to Rick on today. That was that was one of the things that he addressed a little bit. At, at this time, I, I, I specifically asked if any of the prospects would maybe have a position switching ahead, and he said. He wants the guys to be comfortable at the level they're at before he does anything. So it's possible with Micah Johnson. And I've had a scout tell me he thinks he'd make a, a great center fielder. Obviously, we, Adam Eaton is a, a pretty solid center fielder right now. Um, but he, the scout thought that would be an uh, easy transition for Micah. But I think that would be something down the road when they see he is comfortable with life and, and hitting at Triple A. As Tyler 
One and two to count. Well, you're talking about Gordon Beckham. We're we're a good we're a good infield with Gordon Beckham at second base. There's no question about that. He's the best of all the candidates for that position. He's the best defensively, and he's going to hit. So if his scouts that you talk to as he strikes out Tyler two gone, thinks that Micah can be a good center, an outstanding center fielder, you said. That means he would be at least good on one of the corners because he can run, he can throw, and the whole bit. I think one thing we've talked about in the past is his his mental approach. You guys have talked to him, and you know how how strong that part of his game is. And I, I, if there's a guy that I think that plays into that scout's assessment that he can handle it. And and some guys we know that's not the easiest thing. You throw him in a different spot, and it messes everything up. But that's a strong suit for him. Well, there's an old saying, and, and to just validate what you just said, just because you're a good center fielder doesn't mean you're a good left fielder, and vice versa. All right, Dan Hayes, thank you very much. Good stuff again, buddy. Dan Hayes from CSNChicago.com. Yeah, but Stevie, getting back to the Kepinger sign, when he made that sign, that was a good sign. I mean, a, it's like a manager. When you put a hit and run on, it's a good call before the play. Now, he can't execute it. It's either a good call or a bad call before the play. It's either a good time to do it or it's not. Same way with a sign. When you sign somebody, you don't, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. The injury with the guy that hit 325 the year before. We needed this third base at the time. We just won 85 ball games the year before. So that's not anything. Is that's the third out, and that'll retire the side. We're tied at one. One to look forward to Miller time later in the game brought to you by Miller Light. And a reminder, join us for Friday night trivia on May 23rd in the Miller Light Bullpen Sports Bar at 7.30. Now teams of two to six fans can compete in three innings of trivia. Now each member of the winning team will win a ticket to the all-inclusive home plate club for a future game. And you must have a game ticket and be at least 21 years old to enter the Miller Light Bullpen Sports Bar. Josh Reddick has had a terrific series. He wasn't swinging the bat all that well coming into this series, but that being said, he's hit the ball and squared it up pretty well. Four for eight with a homer. Hitting at 233, a couple of homers and 12 knocked in. That's into left center field. We got a man right there in front of the Xfinity sign. One out. And that'll bring up the catcher, Derek Norris. Who's hitting at 365, four homers, and he's driven in 20. He's another one of the Oakland hitters who's been red hot lately. Came over from the Nationals. We told you about the trade. Tommy Malone in the same deal. But they gave up a good pitcher in Gio Gonzalez going east. As these guys headed west.
Boy, for a pretty good pitcher with a great curveball, Jerry Gonzalez has got some traveling money. He does that. We had him twice. I know. Gio's still throwing it pretty well. One one tie. If you're just tuning in, as a matter of fact, a little oddity. It's our leadoff man, Gordon Beckham, at the first pitch of the ball game out of here. Then in the bottom of the first, their leadoff man, John Jaso, Homer. To make it 1 1. Here's our Xfinity high speed action replays, and it's the home runs in the first inning by leadoff hitters. You just don't see this all that often. But that one just cleared it. And that's where the game sits. So here's Sogard. Hitting it 186, no homers. He's driven in seven. That is a final. Tigers beat Baltimore seven to five. Kansas City. Leading the Rockies 3 2, seventh inning at Kauffman Stadium. Tigers have won eight of their last 11. Find themselves 24 and 12 and starting to heat it up. Him out. We'll go to the third in this one more time. Coliseum and the way it was back in 1968 when they moved from Kansas City coming out here. That's the way it was. It was really a beautiful place, a nice place to play, but of course, football with the Raiders being here as well, they had to add extra seats and for the most part just kill the, the beauty of it. But right here, we are in a 1 1 tie. It'll be Diaz and then back to the top of the order with Beckham. And one of the reasons the guys used to. Really hate to come out here was certainly not the stadium back in those days. It was the team. They won five consecutive divisional titles and three consecutive world championships in the street. Oh. That was just a wonderful ball club. They had terrific pitching. 
A lot of people felt you know it was a big offensive team. They could score some runs, but they made it on their pitching and they had airtight defense. Well, that's the thing. They caught everything. There's a chopper. That's the first rule in baseball: is catch the ball. And it's the smartest playing club that I've ever seen. They knew how to play the game. They didn't come to the ballpark every day saying we're going to kick somebody's behind. They came to the ballpark knowing that they weren't going to beat themselves. They wouldn't make. You always gonna make physical mistakes, but they weren't, weren't gonna make any mental mistakes. Day and age of winning three World Series in a row probably has gone by the boards with a certain amount of parity. You might see it again, but not anytime soon, I wouldn't think. Well, let's see how it's brought parity to the sport. Back in those days, not everybody you had a lot of clubs and were losing money. True. That's into left field off the end of the bat. So Diaz is retired. Yeah, but when he came in, there were only about four teams making money. He's the ninth commissioner in this All game right. scene and is the greatest commissioner the game's ever had. Because there are 30 teams now, and there's 30 teams that are making money. So here's Gordon hit the first pitch of the ball game out of here. Swings at that first pitch again upstairs. You have a good curveball and a good state change. 87, 88 miles an hour looks a whole lot faster than it would if he didn't have those other two pitches. Oh, yeah. Especially when it's up out of the strike zone. That's what he's done over the course of his career with an ERA knocking at the door of four. His ERA against us in his appearances is 0 0.60. And as all Sox fans know, every time you say it or I say it, a left hander with a good change, we're in trouble. And he's got a good one. Try to sneak a fastball by him, but it was out of the zone. Straight up. That ball hit deep in the left center field. Cespedes back on the track in front of the Xfinity sign. He just missed that one. And that'll bring up Gillespie, corner, grounded out to Sogard. Malone's getting some starts because this team was rocked early. A.J. Griffin and Jared Parker both with Tommy John surgery. They chose to let Bartolo Colon go his way last year. That threesome won 44 games and pitched almost 600 innings. So you've got to mix and match. You've got to fill in. Hope your depth is going to get it done. And so far, pitching hasn't missed a beat. Well, that's amazing, too, because you're talking about especially Jared Parker. That guy. Is good, real good. He was their number one. Griffin was their number four, but Parker looked like he was just about ready to put together a string of great years, and he just might do it again. He'll sure come he back from Tommy John. He'll probably be better when he gets back from it. I understand. Tommy John was on Mully and Hanley either this morning or yesterday. Somebody texted me, said it was a Terrific interview. Of course, Tommy, pretty good pitcher in his own right with 200, what, 83 wins. There's a little soft fly ball that's going to fall for a base hit. So a little duck snort right there. Keeps the inning alive for Abreu, which is the big thing. Here's Abreu. He struck out. Malone froze him with a fastball. I watched Tommy John as he was coming back from that surgery. He couldn't open his hand all the way. I saw him playing catch from about 10 feet in front of the dugouts, and then obviously as time went along, he moved it back. And it was a remarkable recovery for him. He had 288 career wins.
Jose goes through that one. And faced Tommy a lot. He was very persistent with that sinker of his. Well, if you didn't make him get it up, you had no chance against him. Kill every worm out in front of home plate. Like the two Atlanta pitchers, Glavitt and Maddox, and they went back to back. His name will live in infamy. Yeah, that's a great game of ball. Well, because of that surgery at the time, think of where they've come now and how relatively quick the guys come back and how effective they come back from something that was experimental at the time. Well, he pitched with the White Sox for seven years and he had a 2.95 ERA. Two and one to count with two down, one on here in the top of the third inning. Hit him on the fist with an 88 mile an hour fastball. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the bottom of the third, still tied at one. Side photo fan for a chance to have it shown on our broadcast later in the game. Actually, it's Southside fan photo. That's brought to you by AT&T. We saw Gentry in the opening game of the series lay down a perfect push button, but that's with Johnny Danks on the mound and it was well conceived because left handers fall off the mound to the third base side. And with that in mind and the idea of a bunt, Gillespie is even with the bag at the cut of the grass at third. That breaking ball low and away. 30 year old center fielder hitting at 293. Three for eight in the series with an RBI. Gap out there in left center. Sierra short out there in right field. There's a strike. Not a bad idea. Two and zero. He threw a cutter. The quick Gentry was taken all the way anyway. They're playing it perfect. And if you're looking for a flexible ticket plan for the season, 
Well, the Sox pick seven, pick 14 plans, let you select the games you want, including great matchups, promotions, and fireworks nights. Jeez. Get these plans, call 312 674 1000 and visit whitesox.com. Jason oh! Homer. Bottom of the first inning. Down by the cage yesterday watching. Guys hit. Every time he's throwing the bat, he put the barrel. Well, most of these guys are pretty strong, as evidenced by their home run totals. Jason is just probably the hottest he's been in years right now. Three and one to count. When Johnny Dinks came in after four innings of work. He was at 80 pitches, and he was talking to. Another one of the pitchers and saying, can't believe I'm at 80 pitches already, but that's what this lineup will do to you if you don't throw a whole lot of strikes because they're not going out of the strike zone for much early in the count. Well, if you missed the game yesterday, I was talking about the conversation, long conversation I had with Chili Davis, who is their hitting coach and former really good hitter himself, became a good hitter. Wasn't that good a hitter when they first Giants first brought him up, but he became a real solid hitter. Well, he got to hit 350 home runs. As a switch hitter, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Approach, approach, approach. The approach is the thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> That'll calm down and cool off a lot of hot bats. He gone. Two down. That's a good straight change. He's used that pretty well today. In fact, he's thrown a couple of them that's had the Oakland hitters out on the front foot and not able to keep the hands back. Well, the guy who started a lot of that. Pitched in this ballpark for a long time. And he wore number 27. Catfish Hunter. And in that time zone, when he first came in, 2 0 in the American League, 2 0, 3 1, 3 2. Here it comes. Almost always a fastball. 98% oh, of the time. Catfish was the guy who turned it around. On 2 0, 3 1, 3 2, you're going to get something off speed. And of course, Catfish Hunter in the Hall of Fame. God rest his soul. Good man. People saw the success that Catfish was having with the stuff he had because he, he and Burley were the same. Stuff wise, nothing. Meanwhile, Cooperstown. Well, Mark's got a ways to go to do that. Well, yeah, but he is very effective. What a year he's had. On the short hop. So a nice one, two, three inning. Barbienzo he's retired the last seven he's seen.
Tune in as Robin and the boys try to get back to their winning ways. It's White Sox Astros Friday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. We have completed three innings tied at one. Both runs, home runs, both by the leadoff hitter in the first inning. So here's Tank. He doubled in the left center. That's one that Malone has thrown. He's been throwing more fastballs early. I assume he's going to start throwing that straight change as we move along in this one. See a good motion. He's got this hitter well out in front of him. And that got him. But Manny Gonzalez is saying that it was a foul ball. Well, it could have hit the bat after it hit his arm. Hand. Well, definitely got part of his hand. As Hermie continues to look at it. And it looks like there's going to be a challenge, I believe. And like most challenges, you're going to need conclusive proof to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field was that it hit. Part of the bat along with the hand. Well, it didn't hit or it didn't hit his hand. Be tough from what we saw. No, you know that you know that it got him. The question is, is there definitive proof the previous play that it got him? Is under review. One way or the other, Tank is going to have a sore hand. Whether he has first base or not remains to be seen. Yeah, especially leading off the inning. That could have got his hand from that shot right there, but it's still tough to see. <laughs> The White Sox are challenging the call on the field. It indicated that the pitch had been fouled. The Athletics don't televise day games during the week, so there is no home television. Otherwise, we would probably have a couple more angles at it, a couple more angles for them to look at in New York. But with no home television, they don't have those angles, so they're seeing what you at home and we have seen. Yeah, it's different if there's two out, nobody on. It's a big call at this point. Yeah, it is. With Ramirez and Canerco, Paul hit the ball very hard last time. Ramirez hit a little line drive. They'd love to see the leadoff man aboard in a 1 1 game. And it looks like they've made their decision. The only question is, what will it be? Go to first base. And here comes Bobby Melvin. Yeah, from that last angle that Mike Lurie showed you, you could see that it very definitely could have got the hand. If you read the lips of Bob Melvin, what he said to Field and Culbreth was, was that a challenge? And the answer is yes, it was. It was not an umpire review, it was a challenge. 
All right, so. Two minutes, 25 seconds for the Lynx. Meanwhile, we. We got the leadoff man aboard. That's all that counts. But we've been going lately. We need a lot of leadoff men aboard. Alexei. Get a little soft line drive to third base. Chases one. Well off the plate. Hit leaders in the American League. It's Melky Cabrera at the top. Let's see, Ramirez trails him by three. We'll see Jose Altuve in Houston and Eric Hosmer. We'll see at the end of this road trip. As we play three in Kansas City. And that pitch off the plate. So the count two and one. Pops him up. Gentry calls off Sogard. Well, he did the right thing, and Sogard thought that he was going to take it for a long time before finally Gentry came in and made the call. You got to call your second baseman off this one. You got to call him off on every one you can. Yep. Especially looking up into. Almost a cloudless sky. Well, this is the toughest outfield in the American League to play in day games. And there's a, there's a lot of clouds as, as compared to most of the time. There's none, <laughs> zero. Here's Paulie. He lined out hard to Lowry at short. I don't think Paul could believe that last call because that one was well wide of the plate, Paul. Well, this right. guy behind the plate is very inconsistent. You don't know what he's going to call. You can't have a you can't talk about him before the game and say, well, he's this or he's that because he's all over the place. One and one to count. Ball hit a rocket last time up, but unfortunately, hit it right at Jed Lowry. That ball hit right size, wrong shape. Went into the upper deck, but unfortunately got around on it a little too quickly. Couldn't keep it between the lines. The young lady very happy with that souvenir. decided that he wants to get a view from the batter's box in every ballpark that he will and has one participated in will never participate again 
And so he hasn't quite decided what he's going to do with those pictures, but he wants to have the angle and how he saw every park that he played in. Well, it's going to be great for his children and his grandchildren. No doubt. That's I wish I'd have done that. It, it's didn't have cameras back then. Well, being a great grandfather, <laughs> you might be right, which I am a great grandfather. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it, De Niro. <laughs> I'm gonna knock him out when the game's <laughs> over. I'm gonna race out of here. <laughs> Outfield straight up. Well, they had the kind, you know, the guy had to hold that little stick with the explosion. Yeah, that's kind of nice. And then the other guy had to light it. <laughs> you had those pictures. It's been a great thing to have for your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. You know, literally at the time when both of us played, you just didn't think a whole lot oh. about memorabilia or souvenirs or ways to document the length of your career or the high points, some of the low points, whatever it was. As he gets Tyler, strikes him out for the second time. We get the leadoff man aboard, can't do anything with it. And follow all the action with White Sox in game live on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Rienzo taking his warm up pitches here in the bottom of the fourth inning in this 1 1 tie. The uniform of the Southside Hitman. 1977. All he's missing is the clam digger pants that we wore. You know, going forward with what you said about the memorabilia back in those days, it, it, it very, you didn't see guys collecting this no. stuff. I mean, I, I wish now that I had. I only kept four things in my career, and I've only kept four. I kept the World Series ring from 1967 with Boston. Obviously, I kept. I see, you, you can understand that. Yeah, 2005 White Sox World Series ring. I kept Player of the Year plaque. And I kept this beautiful montage that, that Mickey had sent me. Man, those are the only four things I kept. I, you know, I could get so much back in those days, but nobody even thought about it. It was a non issue. Well, not only the players you played with, but the players you played against. Oh, Some that's of the greatest about. players, you know, of, yeah. of whatever era you happen to play in. And you just let it go by because it wasn't, wasn't the thought process that no. players have today. Donaldson. That's high and deep to right field. Way back. And it's a 2 1. Oakland lead. We told you about the liveliness of the ballpark, and Donaldson just got that ball up in the air, and it kept on floating. 
I think Sierra thought he was going to have this catch all the way. It's home run number nine, RBI number 28, and our Ford home run replay. That ball up in the zone, and Donaldson just takes it out. Second home run, third of the ball game, second given up by Rienzo. That's their 43rd home run. We have 45. But they have a much, much better, much better defensive outfield. Than they're pitching right now. Because partly because of that has been just sensational. It really helps is you being a former pitcher, you nothing hits the ground on the outfield, doesn't it? It helps when that happens. It helps when you turn every double play that you're supposed to turn. I'm just you talking know. about outfield. Oh, the outfield, absolutely. And hitting the cutoff man is really essential. Also. They've got they've got big speed in their outfield. They got two guys at the corners that throw as well as any two guys around. So you're not going to be able to take the extra base on Cespedes or Reddick. Gentry can fly in center field. Yeah, you can't go from first to third on that right field. No, you cannot. And that over the course of a month, two months, five months, six months, makes a huge difference. Get over there. Call it with a perfect feed. So Moss is retired. Well, that's one of the things you talked about. With our ball club, when Abasayo Garcia was the right fielder, because he's got a good arm, you talked about the fact that if you can limit to 90 feet instead of 180 feet, you're going to save a lot of runs over the long haul. Well, people, people still don't understand the gravity of that injury to us. It was a huge losing Avi. I'm telling you, the way he can go get them, the way he can throw, and then all of a sudden you stick out of meat in center field. It's a different ball club. I mean, it's just an entirely different ball club. That way you can let Tank play back, way back, so he doesn't have to go back on the ball. Let him just come in all the time. And everything is caught from the alley in left center all the way over the right field line. Exactly. There is a lot of room to roam here in Oakland. Yeah, that was just a devastating loss for us. And it just hurts because Avi, obviously, Eels going to lose, you know, 550, 600 at bats. That is top foul by Cespedes, who struck out. Well, a good curveball from Rienzo. Cespedes. One three and zero oh for us. Two two and zero oh for them. Cespedes, like a lot of hitters, doesn't hit this great change very well, and he doesn't hit the good curveball, and he does expand his zone. But like also the more talented hitters, don't make a mistake in the strike zone because he can hit it as far as anybody on that field. You know, in 1974, the Red Sox had a horrible, terrible. 1975, they had two rookies come out. Oh, two, yeah, the two kids, the bookend, the bookend outfielders came out. Bryce and Lynn. And all of a sudden, you had Dwight Evans, his colleague, saving his eyes now, and makes the catch for our number two. Bryce and Lynn, and all of a sudden, you had Evans. Nothing. The reason they won that year, went to the World Series to lose in seven games to the, to the Reds, was the fact that nothing hit the ground in the outfield, and guys were not going from first to third, just as you were describing earlier. Nothing hit the ground. No one, no one took an extra base against Evans. He was your prototypical right fielder of the era, where just about everybody threw. Evans was just more accurate than most. Yeah, that outfield took a, for the most part, a mediocre pitching staff. And made it a good pitching staff.
Ready? Fly deep to left field, taking Tank back in front of that Xfinity sign out there. Two and one. Everybody thought it was because of the offense that they had that year. It was the defense. Get over there. Perfect feed. But the home run opposite field shot by Donaldson, they lead it two to one. Chicago Land Great Clip Salons by May 30th for the Great Clip Summer Sweepstakes details. Now, grand prize winners throws out the first pitch on Mullet Night Friday, June 13th, plus White Sox tickets and a pregame patio party. So purchase your tickets. WhiteSox.com or 866 Sox game. We trail it two to one, top of the fifth. It'll be Sierra, Diazza, and back to the top of the order with Beckham. Here, grounded out to Donaldson the third. And that 7 5 Tiger victory over Baltimore Cabrera with two RBIs. He now has, after that horrible start, he got off to 35. Well, at the time, we figured that it wouldn't take too long before Cabrera became Cabrera, and it hasn't taken too long, seeing as he's become the guy we remember that Detroit has taken off. And you pitch around a bit your peril because Victor Martinez is right behind him and he's as clutch a hitter as there is. Yeah. In this league. Yep. Watch out. The eyes on deck, he almost got drilled. And there's a look at the standings. It's hard to believe already. Ten games back in the loss column for our Sox over the Tigers. The Tigers starting to pull away early. And they are a pretty solid ball club. Yeah, well, as many runs as we've scored. Our outfield defense has really hurt us because of the fact of losing what we just talked about. Have a seal. And Adam Eaton. Well, have a seal. As you know, is going to be lost for the year, but Adam Eaton will be back here in the not too distant future when that happens. 
it's going to give a spark to the offense as well as shore up the defense. So if he comes back and does exactly what he did before he went down, this is going to be a much better team just by his presence. Well, it even goes one step further as far as the energy of both those guys going to, to the game. They both play it hard. They both, that's high. Ready? Makes the guess they both bring so much energy. It's something that we desperately need. Well, speaking of energy, maybe we're going about it the wrong way. Our dear friend Joe Madden decided that his team, which has the second least wins in the American League, stunk. So he decided to bring in seven bottles of various cologne and <laughs> spray it on everybody and let them use it. Because he says, if we stink, this is going to really help us. And he, he says he's going to continue that because he believes in aromatherapy. <laughs> what, what a manager. I Joe love Hatton it. Is. I absolutely well, he's love He's terrific. It. That's one reason I think he's the best manager in the game. I mean, I, I love it. <laughs> Aroma, oh, that's a yeah. new one there, aromatherapy. David Price went with the Aqua Velva Blue. Why well, was it the Nordstrom Rack store the other day and picked up some nice cologne over there? Boy, about a quarter of the price that it goes for in most department stores. So I'll send some of that to Joe. Well, the last thing that they want to do is lose Norris or Donaldson, and they were on a collision course. Looks like Norris got the worst of it. There's so much room here that just about everything is in play. And neither took command, and Norris took a shot, but he's up. And he'll go back behind the plate as catchers. We talk about it all the time. If you're going to choose to be a catcher, Number one, it's the fastest and easiest route to the major leagues. Number two, you have to be an awfully tough guy to go behind the plate on a daily basis. Take all the abuse you take with foul tips and sometimes long back swings that catch you on the side of the head or the forearm or the wrist. And then they ask you to perform offensively just like a guy who doesn't have near the defensive responsibilities you have. It's just a tough place to be. That's why it's the most sought after. Position. Yeah, if you if you find a good one, well, that plugs a huge hole. Well, there's no question. You know, the GM here was that ball in center field. That's out number two. I don't like the guy, but he's made some really good deals. I mean, he really has. You know, and there's a huge part of that, in my opinion, letting him give. Gio Gonzalez to the Nationals was getting that by guy behind the plate. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, a huge part of it. But and once you find that you can maybe get a catcher that you like and it's going to be here for a long time, you've got to give up the time. But you did. Well, take a look at, look around at the team and a lot of the contributing parts. They acquired Donaldson. He came out of the Cubs organization. The Cubs never felt that he could play third. He was a catcher at that point. Norris was acquired. Gentry acquired, Reddick acquired, Moss acquired, Lowry acquired. So a lot of this team is put together via the trade room. I've always developed some pretty good young arms of their own here in Oakland, especially of recent vintage, but they trade for their position players for the most part, and they bought Sesame. He's done a good job in that respect. Unless he got off a sabermetric kick and let Managers start managing as far as stealing bases and running and all that stuff. As there's a base hit by Gordon. Well, that's one of the things that, and I don't know how many organizations do this because, quite obviously, we talked to a few of the managers. Number 12. Not all of them, and a lot of them won't share this, but talking with Bob Melvin, I was asking him the difference because he's 10 years now as a manager. Asked him the difference between when he started and now. He said when he started pretty much a general manager in the front office would give you the players and say here here are your players use them how you see fit. He said that's not how it works in today's game. A lot of times they will give you the players talk about it. But they also make suggestions as to how they should fit in the grand scheme of things and here in Oakland they've always platoon. 
under this regime they have platoon players. Here's Connor. Fouls that pitch back. Well, there's one thing about it. Bobby Melvin, that's I think that's the best move that Beans made. Bringing that guy in. Here. He was he's looking got for these a whole guys given 27 outs. He was looking for a lot of different people, made some changes, brought in some guys that it looked good at the beginning and they didn't fit. But Bob Melvin fits and has fit wherever he's gone. He's a smart manager and he knows how to handle people. Well, the mouth lies, the eyes don't. <laughs> Some of these politicians don't believe what you see, believe what I say. Well, with Bob Melvin, he's not afraid to have a strong coaching staff. There are some managers who are insecure with their jobs that don't want to have the strongest coaching staff they can have because they're afraid they're working with their successor. This is a solid coaching staff in Oakland. Two out, four and one to count. Beckham at first. It's Chip Hale, who's the bench coach. Mike Gallego, longtime third base coach. Ty Waller, first base. And Kurt Young, who is a very good pitching coach and has the full confidence of Bob Melvin. There's a look at Charles Chili Davis. San Francisco Giants brought him to the major leagues. He made the rounds after that. Literally and figuratively. And that's in the left field. Hit deep. Stretch. It's off the top of the wall. So here comes Becker. The throw. Got him. Well, they execute perfectly. That's what they do. Good outfield defense right there. Hits the cutoff man. And we still trail it two to one. In our studios, watch this executed perfectly. Well, a bare hand pick, and then hitting Sogard perfectly, and they cut down Gordon. They've got him by plenty. All he's got to do is keep the ball in the air, and Gordon 
with no chance to slide takes a good headbutt. Well, that's the way Derek Norris plays. He says, I'm not going to let you score, so if you slide, well, I'll tag you, and if you stand up, well, well I will butt stick you. Stick your helmet right <laughs> in his stomach, and then you stick your glove right on in his cup. <laughs> here, here it is. <laughs> He's going for twice. You can't get by me. And here he is, but again, the play sets up with the outfield. He starts the whole thing if he executes well like Cespedes did. A perfect peg to the cutoff man. And you know the funny thing about it, if he doesn't catch that ball barehanded, if he catches it with a glove and then got a transfer, Gordon's got a chance yep. to score. That was the bad break of the play. Yeah, it was. And he got it to Sogard. He turned around and again he had so much time. Two and one. Breaking ball. Last 19 games, Derek Norris has been all everything here, hitting 431. A couple of home runs, 22 hits. But 14 driven in. That's the kind of production you dream about from a catcher, especially one who hasn't had big numbers historically. And a full count. Last year, Norris hit 246, hit just nine home runs, drove in just 30. Wasn't 264 at bats as he split the job. Gordon. Nice. Nice peg. Nice play. One out. Gordon was playing up the middle, and he's got great range to his left. And just as important is he's accurate while doing the 360 spin. Gordon and Alexei. Up the middle. Two of the players, did you on that play right there, you could actually put a blindfold on their eyes and they still hit the first baseman. Yes, here's Sogard. This both they both just know where he is. Sogard bind it down. To Alexi. Day tomorrow and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against both Porters, Houston Astros. The Astros, as has been the case with them, are playing real well. Seven and fourteen at home, six and thirteen on the road. But with all the number one and two draft choices they get every year. They've got some good young players in that system. Soft line drive. Two down. I was talking with a scout before we left to come on this trip back home, and I was he just left Houston. I asked him about Astros. He said, "Well, he said they probably won't beat you, but they're going to play as hard as anybody you're going to play." We saw that last year. Oh yeah, and we oh, had some trouble in in those games against the Astros. You got to love their catcher, Jason Castro. 
Yeah, he's they're gonna give you 27 outs. Gentry fouls that one. Souvenir right side. He popped up to Sierra in right field. Last year, Sox were three and four against the Astros, and this year the pitching has been substantially better. Retired 13 of the last 14 he has seen, and we trail it two to one. Yankees at 7:10, and all fans are invited to stay for a post-game fireworks show presented by Athletico Physical Therapy. Athletico Physical Therapy, better for everybody. So WhiteSox.com or 866-SOX-GAME. WhiteSox.com or 866-SOX-GAME for tickets. Sixth inning, Abreu, Viciedo, and Ramirez. If you're just tuning in, Gordon Beckham hit the first pitch of the ball game out of here for a home run, and that has been it. Good hack just underneath it. Lone got away with one there. That was a fastball up. And on the inner portion, and unfortunately, Jose followed it straight back. Probably wanted it a bit higher than that. But the hitters don't hit every mistake you make. This is another aspect of the game that Malone has acquired lately, and that is the ability to go inside on right hand hitters. Two and one to count. Problem in there, however, is when you miss, you can't miss out over the plate. It costs you a run. If you miss, you want to miss further inside. No, that has been the difference in a lot of careers right there. There are just some guys who could not pitch inside. They could not pitch inside. 
No, the hitters know that, and obviously with all of the tape they have these days, if you can't pitch inside, you've got no chance of getting these guys out. One down. That's one of the things we've seen in this series is that the Oakland pitchers have been staying upstairs out of the zone. And you look at pitch tracks and it shows you exactly where they worked them. That the highest. Of the ones that touch the strike zone. Well he's been getting a just a ton of therapy on that ankle that. Lead ankle it's got to be got to be very tough for him. I think that I don't think there's any questions affected. Him. Breaking ball the tank. Tank. A double and it was hit by a pitch. Tax it up. In that Houston series starting Friday, we're going to run Quintana, Noesi, Danks out there. They're going to run McHugh, Cosart, and Peacock. There's the chopper two hopper. Before the game, Robin talked about the Abreu situation and mentioned that with the off day tomorrow, he'll probably give him Friday to get him a couple of days off to. Maybe take some of the tenderness out of that ankle. Although Abreu showed in spring training with his ankle problems that he wants to be out there every game. Sometimes you're your own worst enemy, however, and you gotta let nature take its course. Well, here's a guy at the plate right now that would play every inning of every game if you'd have let him. That's one thing that has characterized his career is his resiliency. And he's got the least amount of meat on the bones of any player we got. <laughs> That's one thin guy. <laughs> he, is, he is a very thin man, but deceptively strong. Oh, yeah. Sinewy, that wiry strength. Stand right there. You should see him in the street clothes. Now feel straight up, about equidistant. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Get a break because there's no way Donaldson throws out Ramirez on that chopper. But he crossed over into foul territory. Bob Melvin believes that Donaldson can play any position on the field. They just happened to have needed a third baseman. He was the third guy they put down there. And that move turned into gold for them. As he's been a terrific defender. And he swung the bat exceptionally well. Including he was as clutch today. last year. He was in for sure in the top 10 clutch hitters in this league last year. Yes, he was. Eighteen thousand thirty five in attendance today. That's that's a shame. This kind of ball club. Well, the last two games, a little over thirteen thousand, yeah. a little over ten thousand. I mean, it's, it's, it's a shame. It really is. I mean, it's a fun club to watch play. We're in first place by four games. And the bullpen up and going for the first time. They're open. 
High and deep to left field. Cespedes back. And he makes the catch. He just missed that curveball. Just underneath it. Meanwhile, a one, two, three inning. Back after splitting the first two with the Cardinals. Tune in and see if Junior Lake and the boys can turn the bats back on. It's Cubs and Cardinals tonight at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. They have a 2 1 lead in this game. If you're just joining us, three home runs. Two leadoff men in the first inning. Beckham for us at the first pitch of the game out of here, and then Jaso. Leading off the bottom of the first homer, and then leading off the fourth, Donaldson homer. So here's Jaso. And he falls behind him 2 and 0. Oh. That's not a good thing to do. We saw Artero in this series. And there's a very good chance we're going to see him again as he continues to throw. He came out for two innings yesterday. That's somewhat surprising after two perfect innings. He'll be up this afternoon. Man of the count, don't walk him. Make him hit his way on. Come back and get it. Dreaded leadoff walk. Second walk issue. Lowry ends over. And here's Lowry, the shortstop. Switch hitter. He's lined out hard to right and he's grounded to second. He's a better hitter with more power from the left side. But being a switch hitter, it certainly helps. Having the breaking ball always come into you. And with the exception of a pitcher with a screwball, there's not too many of those. There's nothing really going away from you. As Scott Downs starts to get ready. This will be pitch number 88. That was a wild pitch. And Tyler did whatever he could do and tried to do it well, but he had the ball roll away. So now for Lowry, he's got to try to pull the ball. Bounce up, hit him in the chest protector. He brought the arms in, which is good, brought the elbows in and blocked it, but couldn't corral it.
He got out and around it. In a similar situation in last night's game, in the fifth inning with Jaso, a leadoff double. Lowry came up and had been pulling the ball all series, and he popped it up to shortstop. Did not move the man. As it turned out, it was a big inning anyway, a four-run fifth that sealed the fate of Scott Carroll. It looked like on the last swing that Lowry was determined to pull the ball, as he has twice already in this game. Field, straight up, spread out about equal distance. Even if it doesn't work, I love that play. Well, you try to shorten up the secondary lead. I mean, if you can shorten up the secondary lead by even a step or a step and a half, or a half a step, it means that, yeah, it means the difference between throwing out a guy and not. So we've seen a bot a couple of games. And he's wrong. Yes, he did. Two and two the count. This pitch has his own. Fans booing, but that's a strike. And Lowry again fails to do the job. Well, as you can see, he's been pretty steady with a tough first inning. Outside of that, he's probably where he needs to be, throwing as many breaking balls as he does. So here's Josh Donaldson fly out to center. Now he's going to go to third and he gone. So we're not the only ones that pull some bonehead plays. Now that was a real bad base running play by Jaso. I'm not sure what he's thinking about, but it can't be. If the ball is hit in front of you, don't run the third if you're at second base. And it's pretty easy after that. Well, it's plays like that that can turn ball game around in the psyche. If they come away empty here, this is a big lift for our ball club. Certainly a big lift for Rienzo. I'm not sure how many more he's got in him, but he can get away and not give up a run here. Well, let's face it, since Rienzo has been here, He's done the job. He has done that. 3 and 0 oh and a good start here this afternoon. And now Belisario throwing in the pen. We saw him for an inning last night. Gave up a hit and a walk, but no runs. He was the only Sox pitcher to go unscored upon. Two and zero the count. Moss has walked and grounded out three to one. That shift with Beckham. 20 feet back on the outfield grass. And there he drops a hook on him. A good idea. You get a right hander due up in Cespedes, who hasn't had any luck to this point. And you've got Moss, who hit a couple of home runs yesterday and has been red hot. Now the hook. 
And they broke. And fix it, fix now, it. I would think there would be nothing wrong with going back to another hook, and if you miss with that, throw another one. Exactly right. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you miss with two, well, then you go right after Cespedes. Tried the same pitch that he used on Lowry, but didn't get the corner. Neither the hook or the straight change. That's a straight change. He gone. He pitches over the leadoff walk. And we're into the seventh. And you can join the White Sox Kids Club presented by the University of Chicago Medicine Comer Children's Hospital because they're teaming up to promote a healthy lifestyle and combat childhood obesity. Now members will receive free White Sox tickets and cool exclusive kids club items. So visit WhiteSox.com backslash kids. Dan Otero comes into the ball game and he's 3 and 0 with a 218 ERA. This is 18th appearance. Doesn't walk many people, as you can see. He's been pretty tough. But he did pitch a couple of innings last night, so in less than 24 hours, he's back out there, and maybe, just maybe, the elasticity in that arm might not be quite what it was last night. Here's Polly. A young man who attended Duke and then transferred to South Florida. Paulie. Paulie is lying hard to short and he is lying hard to center, so he's barreled it up twice. And the bullpen is still up and going just in case Otero has some problems. He mentioned he worked two innings last night. He would have had to give him the okay and said that he was entirely healthy. So that being said, let's see if our boys can jump on it. Yeah, he had two easy innings. Yep. Six up, six down. Last year, a terrific year. He split it between Sacramento and Oakland. 2 0, 138 ERA, and 33 bullpen appearances for Otero. Chops at foul. 
Luke Gregerson has joined a bod. Gregerson had a good year last year with San Diego. 271 ERA in 73 appearances. Well, Bobby Melvin is adhering to an age old adage for managers. Because that's softly hit. And that's out number one. And that adage being you get a close ball game going in the seventh inning. You better have a right hander and a left hander soft tossing in that pin. It's a luxury if you have a couple of left handers so then you can mix and match when you get just nine outs to cover and that's what Malone gave him. Then it becomes a whole lot easier if your starter exits in the fourth. Now you've got some big problems. Well you show me a manager that does that and I'll show you a good manager. You show me a manager that does not do that. And I'll show you a guy that shouldn't be managed. Poor guy that's going to get beat late a lot. That's why he shouldn't be managed. Flowers. Both two with two strikeouts. Malone went six. Gave up just that leadoff home run. Five hits. He didn't walk anybody. He did hit one and he fanned four. The way some of these offenses are in the American League. And actually getting to be that way in the National League too, but especially in the American League with the DH the team can sneak up on you in a hurry and ambush you. Get four or five before you have somebody ready. That's well if you allow that now. if you allow that to happen late, then you're not gonna win a lot of games. No. And there are a lot of guys that allow that to happen late. <laughs> At one point, they had three guys in their bullpen that threw from the left side. Now, Pomerantz has been starting. And the guy that they're looking to to close, Sean Doolittle, is a hard throwing lefty. We saw him save the ball game on Monday night. And there's a chopper two hopper. First two hitters have been a clinic on how to go inside and go inside effectively. You go inside off the plate. You get hitters to swing at it. There's nothing they can do with it, and that's where the fastballs have been to both Paul and Tyler. They've been a good two, three inches inside off the plate. And if you want to wear your glasses like that, and you're leading the league in home runs, by all means, do it. Upside down. I can't. If I put my glasses on like this, they'd be up <laughs> my forehead. <laughs> Moises has grounded to third and popped up to his counterpart, Reddick. Another chopper two hopper. So Otero, last night and this afternoon so far, has faced nine guys, retired them all.
lucky to Andre Rienzo has given up, but two hits, unfortunately, both of them left the park. And he's got to win his way through Cespedes, Reddick, and Norris, but the bullpen is up and going. Belisario and Downs continue to throw, and you would think that Andre, at this point, would be on a short leash. Cespedes has struck out and fouled out to Canary. And he takes one away ball one. This might be the best three days we've enjoyed in Oakland. Maybe ever. It's record temperatures for this time of year. I mean, two night games. Very, very comfortable. Today, it's muggy. Moody. Outfield, straight up. Tanks deep out there and left where he should be. It's number 103 for Rienzo. There's a strike. Count. Andre has averaged just a little over five innings per start. Well, for a guy who did not come north with your ball club, he's done an outstanding job. He's tied for the team lead and wins. Hoping that the offense will come to life and have a chance for another one. The two hits, just two walks. Uh oh. Stay in here. Yes. The parents, White Sox, baseball camps are open to boys and girls ages 5 to 12 and We'll be in over 60 communities this summer, so call 630 Play Ball or visit BullSoxAcademy.com. That's BullSoxAcademy.com to find a camp near you. I would think that would be it. A very good job by Andre Rienzo. He'll leave. And Scott Downs will come in to face Reddick. So we'll step out and be back after these messages. And you could win a brand new Mazda 3 White Sox themed car from CJ Wilson Mazda. 
Tickets are just 10 bucks and can be purchased at whitesox.com backslash soxcar or at U.S. Cellular Field. Scott Downs comes in at 0 and 2, the ERA 470 on for the 20th time. Odds are overwhelming that he's just on for one man. And then turn it over to Belisario to face Norris. Big hack, no contact. For Rienzo, six and a third. Two runs, two hits, two walks, and four strikeouts. And a job well done. Beautiful job by Rienzo. Redick has faced Scott Downs eight times, has one hit. Pitch didn't get it. And the count goes full. Standing there, he's fully loosened up, and he's probably getting loosened up for that guy, Eric Norris. Back him. Here comes Robin. Scott gets his man. Belisario will come on and we'll be back. season long with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. At bat brings you baseball wherever you are with live look ins, instant replay, score, stats, highlights, audio, free MLB TV game of the day, live pitch by pitch tracking, classic games, and much, much more. So download this award winning MLB.com at bat on the App Store or visit WhiteSox.com. Osario comes in at one and three, the ERA 4.79 after the 18th time. 
Norris 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Checks it up, takes strike one. He has grounded the third. And Beckham made a good play on it. 0 for 2. First time he's ever faced Balsario. Abad and Gregerson throwing in the Athletics bullpen. Well, I wish I could have gone a beard like that. That's a substantial beard. How sedated beard? That's a large, thick beard. Mine got about uh, at the most quarter of an inch long, turned red, and stopped. Just 12 and 9 at home while on the road they are 13 and 6. Somewhat surprising thing is they usually dominate folks here. Two and two. Yeah, this coming in to play them in this ballpark it was the same connotation of years ago when you went in to play Kansas City in their ball. It's hard to be going there for a four game series. We're fortunate to get one. Well, that team on the artificial surface would run you out of the ball. Park. Yes, they would. Full count. Yes, they would. They were relentless. So, guard in the on deck circle. If Norris can keep it alive. On. A one, two, three inning using three pitchers, and we're into the eighth.
and photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Southside Fan Photo for a chance to be shown on our broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. There's a young Sox fan with an oversized cap. So Fernando Abad comes into the game. And he's in for most likely just one hitter as Gregerson continues to throw and Gordon Beckham do up next and he's hit the ball very well. So there you look at some pretty impressive numbers for Abad. Now he's appeared in all three games. So here's Diazza. Then we go back to the top of the order with Beckham and Gillespie. Boy, he got a cookie and missed it. Bob hung a breaking ball up in his eyes, and Alejandro fouled it straight back. To the count. If you're just tuning in, we scored our run in the top of the first inning on the first pitch of the ball game. Since then, nothing. Beckham hit it out of here. Good chance in the fifth, only to see good defensive execution. Now there you go. Now that's a good. That's a handsome looking beard. He could have grown it between. Last night's game and today's. I had to have one. Long enough that I could wipe my nose with it. <laughs> that might be. That might be long enough. <laughs> okay. Now there you go again. You tell me my nose is that long. No. It's. Um, well, yes, maybe. Beckham, he's two for three, and just missed another one back in the third inning when he went deep out there into left center field. Well, Bob Melvin decided that he wanted the left-hander to face Beckham and then Gillespie, so Gregerson sat down. Start us off right here, Gordon, with one out. Three and one. Looks like it's Jake Patrichka throwing in the bullpen. Take a look where it shows up, and it did have the zone. That ball hit deep. Stay fair. Stay fair. He looks up, and it's dead. Gum it. Foul. Bob Melvin took a gamble, letting a bod face Beckham as well as he's been swinging, and he just missed tying up the ball game. This is crushed down the line. That ball was inside off the plate and Gordon unfortunately a little too quick. And the payoff. Field spread out a little bit, gap out there, a nice gap in right center. Oh. 
Next pitch will be the ninth pitch of the at bat as Gordon is battling a bob. Single. That's a terrific at bat for Beckham. He kept falling off the tough pitches, finally getting one to his liking and collecting his third hit of the day. So here's Gillespie. He's two for three, a single and a double, high off the wall in left center field. Two out. Beckham was at first base, and they made a perfect relay throw to get it. Terrific play by Cespedes. One of the prettiest things in baseball is a perfectly executed relay. It is over better when you're on the other side of it. That's right. That's exactly right. Gregerson's going to be brought in to face Abreu regardless of what happens unless. Of course there's a double playground ball. He was at one, and if you miss that beautiful play, here it was. What Cespedes? There he Yeah, if he has to catch it with his glove, it might be a different story. Meanwhile, he made the play. And there's a chopper base hit, so Gordon's going to make the turn. He'll move into third base. And Sox with one out have runners at the corners. Third hit for Gillespie. That's going to be the last man that a bot is going to face. So it'll be Gregerson against Abreu with the tying and go ahead runs on base. So as Gregerson comes in, we'll step out and be back after these messages. Taking it through the right side. And Gordon, knowing there was not going to be a play on him, carrying the tying run with him as Luke Gregerson comes into this one. He's been 
a good pitcher for a long time. On to the 20th time, the ERA 237. Only three walks, 13 strikeouts, and with San Diego, he had a below three point ERA two years in a row out of that pen. So here's a Bayou. He's had a tough afternoon, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Seattle on deck. Sox need it. Four to two. That's home run number 15. Jose is now driven in 41. He didn't have a particularly good day swinging the bat, but it looked like he got a slider down and hit the daylights out of it. That ball, ball was shot out of a cannon. It was out over the plate. Norris wanted it low and in. He couldn't get it there. And you don't have to put much pressure on that ankle when you hit him that far. That's hard to believe how fast that ball left this ballpark. Man. That is out of play right side. That's the first home run this year given up by Luke Gregerson. That one goes out of any ballpark and it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing in a gale or not. It doesn't make a difference. That that's that's one of those right there that you gotta see it to believe it. If he gets it up, it might be in that upper tank up there. That was just a line shot. It's, that is out number two. Man, wow. So here's Alexi. Oh! Abreu doesn't have a whole lot of facial expression when he does what he does. So Adam is saying you got to enjoy that one because. They don't get out of here much quicker than that. No, that that's one of those is a hitter you don't feel. <laughs> you can hear it though. Yeah, that that had that certain sound. Four eight and zero oh for us. Two two and zero oh for them. And with one swing of the bat, Malone cannot win it. And Rienzo cannot lose it. Right back. But the cannon shot. The cannon shot off the bat of Jose Abreu, and we lead it four to two.
<laughs> you remember that, Chris? Remember that cannon they called Big Bertha? That's what that thing looked like right there, going out of Big Bertha. Man, so here's Sogard. Takes first pitch strike. Eric Garcia checks in the game in center field, and he's checking the sun. And Diazza already knows where the sun is, has shifted to left. That's a fair ball. Bali will take it himself, so Sogard now 0 for 3. Just telling Jimangio, our director, we've been working together for 30 years here. That might be the quickest I've ever seen a baseball leave the ballpark. So here's Kayaspo hitting for Gentry. But whatever path it left the bat, it was going to stay there. It couldn't possibly hook. Couldn't move. It just was a rocket off the facing of the second deck. Yeah, there's no question. If he would have got that ball up, it was going in the upper tank. I mean, where the 74 and 89 markers are. That's tough foul. 21 to count. Yes, sir. That's unreal. One and two. Get foul. Get foul. Get win. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Life, and it's our Miller moment. And Gregerson wanted to get this in. He didn't get it there. And the first home run he's given up all year took a very short amount of time to get out of the ballpark. And it gave the ball club a two-run lead. Two down. It hit right next to the sharp sign, and there's no telling how far it would have gone had he got under it. Yeah, instead I mean, of just it would have been something it up. you'd be talking about 50 <laughs> years from now. Well, you know, I played against Madeline Maris, Mays, McCovey, Killebrew, all those guys. Musial. I've never seen a ball leave the park quicker than that. Frank Howard. Jose has tremendous power, and it doesn't matter which field. And Big Frank. I've never seen a ball leave quicker than that one. That's into center field. So Belisario, he and Liuri lost it. Now Diaz comes over, makes a catch. Belisario halfway to the dugout. He didn't see what happened. Meanwhile, nice inning, and we lead it 4 2.
Up. Cespedes shifts over to center field. Moss goes from first base to left field. Kiaspo, who came in as a pinch hitter, checks in at first base. What a nice play right there by Alejandro Diazza. Well, he went over, drifting into the gap, and then when Leury said he couldn't see it, he just took it himself. Unfortunately, he was there. As soon as this ball goes up, bear in mind, you'll see it just came in the game, and there's no angle for him. He can't see it. Fortunately, he yelled out to Alejandro, and he was there to make the play. Paulie oh, can't get it. Paulie 0 for 3, but he's hit the ball very hard twice today. Yeah, this is the high sky now. They had a few white wispy crowd clouds earlier. They're gone. And now this is the toughest outfield in the American League and day games to play. Probably a little easier if you're out there for the entire game so you can get sure. used to it. But yeah, yeah, that's another factor, yeah. Yes, that's out number one. There it is. Boy, I tell you, I've been out there and it is absolutely a nightmare. Number 21. Flowers. And especially if you've got a huge, huge crowd. Well, today you're not going to lose too many line drives into shirts. No. Which is a shame. But it is what it is. And here's Flowers, who is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Matt Lindstrom throwing in the pen. Scorebook, I write down little notes in each and every game. So sometimes I go after that night or later on. I just put fastest ball I've ever seen to lose a part. <laughs> it was it? It was a rocket. That's fouled away. Four runs, eight hits, no errors for our guys. If you're just tuning in, Vienzo, another outstanding effort. Two down. That'll bring it. Sierra. He's 0 for 3. Two grounders to third and one pop up to right. Checks it up, oh. takes a strike. Lindstrom will come on to try to nail it down after some very good solid work out of the pan. By Downs and the one man he faced, and an inning and a third out of Belisario, and he was perfect. Well, Belisario has been the man. He has been the man. He's the one that sort of got that bullpen straightened out. That ball hit hard for a base hit. So good speed aboard. And now bring up Diazza, who just bailed us out by staying with it and hustling over there. Good play by Alejandro. He's 0 for 3. He's due. It's 
Sierra has yet to attempt a stolen base. He's got good speed. Not getting much of a lead. In fact, not getting any lead to speak of. Oh, and one to count to Alejandro. Saturday and Sunday, we tee it up against the Astros at the juice box. Quintana on Friday for us. Nuesi on Saturday and Dax on Sunday. And the A's bullpen getting another pitcher up. There he goes. And he gets there. That's ruled a wild pitch. Norris did whatever he could do to get it in front, but the heads up base running play by Sierra. When he sees this ball that far away from Norris, he takes off and beats the play. Now pick him up, Alejandro. Left side. I mentioned we're going to run Quintana, Noesi, and Danks out there. They're going to run McHugh, Cosart, and Peacock. Friday and Sunday's game will be right here over Comcast Sportsnet. Saturday's game will be over WGN. Out, two balls, two strikes. All right, we'll go to the bottom of the ninth, leading 4 2. After the game, join Chris and Bill for White Sox Post Game Live presented by Subaru. Get their take on today's game and all the action around the league. Don't miss White Sox Post Game Live today right after the game on Comcast Sportsnet. So Matt Lindstrom comes on to try to nail it down. Lindstrom 2 and 1, the ERA 371 on for the 17th time. He's 5 for 8. And save opportunities, and he's got to go right through the heart of the order 
to go six for nine. Just like Abner designed it. It's always the heart of the order. Isn't that amazing? The preciseness of the exact distances of the base paths. When you get to the bottom ninth in the close game, they always get three, four, and five coming up. In this case, two, three, and four. As Lowry, 0 for 3. He's lined right, got it to second, and struck out. Side of it. Uh, don't get underneath. That time he did both. And don't walk it. Three and one. Three home run hitters back to back to back. Donaldson, who hit an opposite field home run in the fourth inning. He has, however, grounded into four double plays this year. He's got nine home runs, 28 knocked in. Something off. Now fielder straight up, spread out. And deep all the way around, as you would expect in a no double set. Yes. And a count one and two. Gillespie right on the line at third base. And Gordon Beckham playing up the middle. Second base. Time runs aboard, nobody out. Donaldson has a very lively bat, and that fastball is right down the middle. Cut the heart of the plate, and he hit a one hop rocket. Rated Garcia. That's just their third hit in this ball game. The first two were home runs one by Jay So, one by Donaldson. So. Here's Moss. Brandon Moss has walked, counted out three to one, and struck out. And Moss, since August 19th of last year, has more home runs than anybody in the American League. And two of them coming last night. 
And he has hit one off Lindstrom in the past. The recent past. Last night, as a matter of fact. That's where he hit the two. Checks it up. In the sixth and the eighth. Frankie Francisco, the first time. Doubter in the eighth. Yeah, that was deep. Real deep. Breaking ball strike. All right, boys. All right, boys. Rack them up. Two down. Alexi is hurt. And I don't know if it was on the slide or what happened to him, but he's in some pain. For just the third time this year, Moss grounds into a double play. Oh, man. <laughs> Says he's all right. So here is Cespedes. Cespedes has struck out, fouled out, and then he just missed one, a high towering drive underneath it to left field. 0 for 5 career wise against Lindstrom. And sliders away will do the trick. That's a perfect spot for it, and you got four more tries to four throw one in the same <laughs> in the right. same spot. And here's where you, if you miss, you miss low and away. Yeah. You just don't think about anything except if you miss, miss low and away. That's in the center field. Come on. Yes, what a play by Leury. He stayed with it, committed to it, and made the catch, and this ball game is over. A terrific effort getting a good jump on a sinking line drive. And he gets it, pounds the turf. And the Sox come from behind and beat a very tough Oakland team in the finale of the series. Courtesy of the man you're looking at, three run bomb. Let's check out our GMC players of the game. It is Andre Rienzo. Who pitched well, he will not get the win, but he pitched well, and big first, Jose Abreu, with that three-run rocket shot out of a cannon, one of the quickest you will ever see leave a ballpark.
Those are our GMC players of the game. So for my partner, Steve Stone, our director, Jim Angio, our producer, Mike Leary, our associate producer, Dave Ross, our technical manager, Mark Harper. For the mayor, Mean Joe Group, the executive producer, Jim Corno Jr., our terrific crew always here in Oakland, Pete Delonzo, Tom Mecklen, Charlie Mansfield, Rick Thomas, this is the hall. So long, everybody. Coming up next, Subaru Post Game Live with Chris Bowden and Bill Melton. You've been watching White Sox baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. <laughs>